Hey, nice to see you, Congressman. You were just in a meeting with Speaker Pelosi and Democrats about the president's agenda. What was her message? Uh, well, I think, you know, we want to get this done. Um, you know, we've been negotiating, as you know, for a number of weeks. We're down to just a few issues. Uh, but what we want to do is pass these two bills that build a uh, build back better agenda of the president's. And that's what the American people are going to benefit from. 40 million American families get a tax cut, lowering costs from everything from child care to prescription drugs, creating jobs, many of which tackle climate, climate change, $550 billion towards uh, affecting climate change. And it's paid for, as you're all just talking about, uh, largely by the wealthy and uh, those corporations that have not paid taxes for a long time. So it's a popular agenda that the American people will actually benefit from. That's what we need to deliver. And I, I, she just wanted to make sure that we're able to get it done. You said we're, they're down to just a few issues. If you could just help us understand what that is, what she said, and what the timeline is right now. Yeah, the timeline isn't exactly clear, other than rules is going to be meeting now to start a hearing. It could be a vote as early as tomorrow. Um, so uh, I think that's something we're looking for, depending on how long rules goes. But, you know, we know that as the people that you just had on the panel were talking about, this isn't a fight within the Democratic Party. I mean, 48 senators and over 200 members of the House are all ready to go on this. We've got a couple senators that we've been trying to get forward on a couple issues. And when we get this done, and we will get this done, um, this is going to be a really big transformative change for many American families. I, I, when I look at what we're doing, it's probably as big as anything Congress has done since the 40s or 50s. Well, I, I got to push back a little bit because progressives have been holding up the infrastructure bill and all of this uh, during these talks because they want the two tracks. And you've, you've heard Democrats um, pinning some of the blame on progressives for doing that. Uh, Senator Mark Warner comes to mind, he was pretty blunt in putting the blame on progressives. Let's listen to what he told Armani Raju. Only in Washington could people think that it is a smart strategy to take a once-in-a-generation investment in infrastructure and prevent your president from signing that bill into law, and that's somehow a good strategy. Congressman, he's talking about your caucus, progressives holding out and voting for the infrastructure bill to make sure the Build Back Better bill is going to pass in the Senate. In hindsight, was that strategy a mistake? Since we had that strategy, we now have a prescription drug uh, benefit that's going to be in the bill. Since that strategy, we now have family and medical leave uh, in that bill, uh, as well as many other things. So, yeah, it was a damn good strategy because we've got more benefits for the American people. And um, I think we're ready to vote on this because now this has enough that people will really see the benefit for their family. And it's about time that real people got some benefits from their federal government. But what about, do you think that the, the loss in Virginia, the fact that it was a tight governor's race in uh, New Jersey, had anything to do with Democrats not actually passing that infrastructure bill? It was passed in August in the Senate. It was bipartisan. It could create jobs for investment. How is that a good strategy to keep that hanging in the balance? Yeah, so my uh, former uh, c colleague from Wisconsin, a Republican, Reed Ribble, today tweeted that the reason why Youngkin won was because he had a better campaign, he was a better candidate, and he distanced himself from Donald Trump. So if that's coming from Republican members of Congress, uh, I think that says a lot more than a bunch of people in Capitol Hill who like to pontificate about what happened. Uh, here's someone who actually understands the Republican Party telling you why uh, that person was elected. The good news is we had a record number of Democrats come out as well. It was just a high turnout election. Um, but the good news is when we get this bill done, uh, when people see that they can pay no more than 7% of their income for child care, when they're getting a tax cut through the child, child tax credit for years going forward, that we're finally addressing climate change, those are all things that you haven't had a Congress do in a long time, and we're going to deliver more than you've seen in decades. Do you think the recent election results show that progressives are out of touch with what a majority of Americans want? Yeah, well, I think I just said, you know, just since last week what we did, people support family and medical leave. That wouldn't have happened had it not been for progressives. People support reduced prescription drug prices. We just got that in because of what progressives did. So, you know, I think there's a lot of Washington rhetoric because there's a lot of special interests in this town who like to tell people what to think. The bottom line is when people have family and medical leave and pay less for prescription drugs, we now know where it came from. So to be clear, you don't believe that progressives, Democrats, are out of touch with 
what a majority of Americans want, with voters on the ground and what they want and what they care about the most. Yeah, those two issues I just mentioned are wildly popular. But paying the infrastructure bill drugs. could have, I mean, some of the pain they're feeling, like pain at the pump, at the grocery store and so forth, jobs, I mean, the infrastructure bill could have addressed that. Actually, Build Back Better addresses it more. Um, and in fact, we've got 17 Nobel winning uh, economists who've said that when we pass both of these bills, you'll actually have deflation, uh, not deflation, but you won't have the inflationary aspects we're having right now. So the good news is these bills will have that impact we're looking for. Right now, face it, I'm a small business owner for 34 years. You know, we've got supply shortages, we've got all sorts of things because the whole world is coming out of COVID right now. And that's bringing some prices up. And no question, that impacted how people looked at at the election, but that isn't the impact of what we're doing. We're going to actually fix the economy and help American people at the same time. And uh, inflation will not be negatively impacted by what we're doing. So I think we're going to, if we have this conversation six months to nine months from now, uh, you're going to see exactly what I was saying. It's exactly what the Nobel economists also predicted. We will be checking back in then. I want to look ahead to the midterms. What lessons can be learned, in your view, from the Virginia race? What should Democrats take away from this? Junkin did flip the script when it came to education and parents' rights, but cultural issues also played a major role in the election. How do Democrats need to approach cultural issues? Well, I think, first of all, the most important thing is people want us to deliver. I sat through and watched a focus group about six months ago, and it was people who don't always vote, but when they do, they vote Democratic. And their number one thing is they wanted Democrats with majorities to get something done. We're about to do that with the two bills and but the Build Back Better But you didn't get it done agenda. before the Virginia race because progressives yeah, were holding you, up the infrastructure bill. Reporters, I, I saw I'm a journalism major. The only people who ask me when we're going to pass the bill are reporters. Back home, what people ask is what but is in the bill. But the infrastructure bill could have actually, it, it was passed in August. August. It's right. been, what, four months? So As that could I, have I, actually created things. You could have, Democrats could have said they passed something, they had to win. And, that, and you're saying that's exactly what voters want. They want to see that, that Congress is working, that things are passing. None of those jobs would have been created yet because it would have been a matter of a couple weeks. You guys are all an anxious sort. I understand. Right, but you're saying that you can run on a message of, um, you if know, If you'll winning. let me finish, I'll be Go glad ahead. to. Yeah, uh, it's a lot easier if I'm allowed to talk, too. Um, I have been giving you plenty of time to talk. Go ahead, Congressman. Yeah, no problem. Uh, what I'm saying is when you have these two bills done, uh, people will see what we've all delivered. The child care. The fact, you're not paying more than 7% of your child care will save families five or 10,000 each who have a single child in health care. Uh, the fact that they're paying less for prescription drugs, the fact that uh, we're finally addressing climate change and creating jobs to actually address that, that's what people will really see. But you needed to get both bills done to get that done. And as I mentioned, just in the last week, since we didn't vote on the infrastructure bill. We now have paid and family medical leave for four weeks in the bill and a prescription but drug benefit. But you know the benefit. Senate isn't, I and mean. people will feel that. Joe Manchin has already said he is not gonna go for that. And you know that, right? I mean, do you actually think it's gonna pass through the Senate with the four weeks of paid family leave? I, I think that what Nancy Pelosi was basically saying is we also have a say. Joe Manchin doesn't get to be the president. Um, the president's the president. And the House of Representatives, Nancy, number three in line, she thinks it's extremely important, as do I. We have family medical leave. We now have that in a bill that we're going to put forward. And I think on the prescription drug benefit, um, Senator Sinema seems to be on board. If Joe Manchin wants to go back to West Virginia and explain why people aren't paying less for prescription drugs, I don't think he'll do that at the end of the day. I think it'll work out. So um, I'm a little closer to these conversations. I feel like things are in a good place. I've got some assurances from talking to the president over the last several weeks. Uh, I'm more optimistic, I guess, than you are. Oh, I'm not taking a stand one way or the other. I've just been covering this for many, many months now. Sure. And um, I've been hearing a lot of the optimism from Democrats for the last four months, and, and um, so that is why, uh, you know, I, what, I continue to press with those What questions. we call this is the storm before the calm, uh, and you're going to have this passed very soon, and then we'll be talking about, hopefully, we'll spend as much time okay. on the process as we do on the product, what's in the bill. Democratic Congressman Mark Pocan, we have been covering what's in the bill um, every step of the way. Thank you so much for coming on the sure. show. We appreciate it. Thank you.